from China who uh, withstood some interrogations to get us to the... Uh, oh my god. This introduction is going to take the whole time, but that's fine. Um, Dea Schlossberg, my wonderful producer. Um, Annika Lilia, editor. Steve Lutte, camera and editing. I already told you about Jack. Lena Srivastava, impact and engagement. Raven and Tatiana. Uh, members of the Doe family. <laughs> Jack's uh, assistant. Lee Zishi, grassroots. Uh, engagement for our films. More people from the Action Center. I think that's it. Is that everybody? Is Nancy Abraham here from HBO? Can I say thanks? She might not have uh, been able to be here. And also the team from Synetic. Um, is in the house. So thank you so much. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, so I guess back to the mo uh, moderator and your regularly scheduled Q&A. <laughs> this is an amazing Q&A. No, 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 stay up here, stay up here. Questions are, can be for anybody. Yeah, yeah, let's open up uh, the room for questions. Oh wait, sorry, I forgot. Mark Jacobson and Clara Vondridge from uh, the World of Renewable Energy Science and Diverse Index. Is there anybody I missed? No hand mess, right? Okay, cool. Oh, yeah. Over here. Oh, oh, sorry. Greg King, amazing editor. And where's Gabriel? Gabriel Mayers, um, who is... Where did he go? Oh, we, we have an amazing party with the bands that are in the movie tonight. You're invited, I think. We're all invited forever oh, to the party. 
Maybe right. our party. Sorry. Somebody's party. No, we, we, um, I'll tip on that. I don't know the venue can hold you all, but please do. <laughs> come. On. Sorry. Okay, let's open it up for questions. We don't have too much time, but I want to see if anyone. Yes. Well, let me just say this. Um, this film, I, 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 I'm not going to address exactly that, but what I am going to say is our government is doing something really very tangible on the ground right now that will totally destroy the Paris Climate Agreement, will blow way past two degrees Celsius, and that is, ironically enough for me to be saying this, a conversion from, from the Obama administration, the Clean Power Plan, to move from coal as a source of electricity generation in our country. Not to renewable energy, which would be great, but to gas, to fracked gas. And for those of you who watched Gasland 2, you probably know that frack gas is actually worse for the climate than coal because so much methane escapes in the process, methane being 86 times more potent of a, a, a greenhouse gas, a warming agent, than carbon dioxide. So if we actually transition from coal to gas, we're worse off. And this is happening across America as a result. There's the gas industry now. <laughs> I probably have a few tweets and hostile text messages to answer. Um, but besides that, uh, what, what the people who are on our side, right? Obama and John Kerry, they they um, they created this uh, climate agreement by putting pressure on foreign nations, and at the same time, we're watching 300 fracked gas power plants being planned for America, and that's thousands of miles of pipelines, compressor stations, um, liquefied natural gas terminals. Can we do something about that, guys? Um, so what we're planning to do with this film, in addition, obviously, to HBO, and by the way, if anyone wants to see the people from Synetic, there are rights available besides the television rights, like the theatrical, <laughs> which we would love to do. But we're planning to tour across 100 cities in the United States. And we're going to go to all the hot spots, every place they're fighting a power plant or a pipeline. And these are happening across America, right? And to a lot of our coastal cities that are threatened by sea level rise to combat the fossil fuel industry on their own turf and try to take this process back. Because we don't need gas. We can go straight to renewable energy. We know that. So we're doing a Kickstarter to um, promote that tour. It's called the Let Go and Love Tour. Yeah. There are t-shirts available. Um, but, but, so if you go to Kickstarter page, it's on the homepage. It was launched yesterday. We have a, a panel discussion tomorrow at 11.30 to discuss exactly how we're going to go to community to community to create renewable energy development uh, in the places where they're proposing to do fossil fuel development. And that's our mission for this year, to do that in America and then around the world. So please do support that. And that is something very tangible in terms of the way the government is changing the weather. All right, another question. Question? Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you, Josh, for showing the diversity of this worldwide movement. It's many times seen as just white hippies in this country. So thank you for showing that. My question, I'm from Occupy the Pipeline. My question is, all those nuclear power plants that we kept seeing, I don't think I ever heard that word in the film. You know, it's interesting. He's asking about nuclear power plants. Those aren't nuclear power plants. Those are coal-fired power plants. You get the image in your head from The Simpsons of that cooling tower. <laughs> you know, um, The Simpsons, by the way, which spoofed Gasland and had Bart lighting his water on fire. I don't know if you caught that one. But you get that image of, of nuclear, and that's actually coal. Those are coal. Those are coal fa factories, coal-fired power plants. The cooling towers are actually steam, but those huge smokestacks, which are ringing Salt Lake City, by the way. And here in Salt Lake City, or here in, in, in Utah, we're not in Salt Lake City, you have inversions where the air quality gets to be some of the worst in the, in the country because of all that coal. And so um, those are coal plants. However, what worries me a lot is as sea levels rise, not just the fact that there are people there, 
that there are hundreds of thousands of toxic sites that ring our coastlines. That if we don't start to move them, they're going in the water, and that's going to toxify the oceans, including about a dozen nuclear power plants, which, by the way, take 20 to 30 years to decommission, because they're that hot, and they're that um, full of fissile and radioactive stuff. So, you, so if you're thinking about sea level rise in the near term, you better start to move that stuff now, which is part of the reason why, although we come out and we're going to fight and we want to win, we can't be Pollyannish about things that are, are, are pretty much a done deal. We're going to have to move a lot of stuff in order not to contaminate those bodies of water, which of course we depend upon. And many other such questions like that, right? Just start to imagine. So that's why we need to strengthen community. That's why we need to mobilize. And that's why I think we need to embrace a sense of civic values that these people embody so well. So I want to... I want, can the next question be for Aria or some of the other <laughs> folks here? Because they traveled and they actually beat the snowstorm here. Yeah. It's amazing. Is it for them? Great. Uh, I live in New York City. Uh, and so I am in the center of this massive consumerism that's going on. So for those people who live in, even in my neighborhood, which is, you know, Hell's Kitchen, how do we bridge the gap between the people who are still suffering from Sandy and, and trying to in some way, in some little way, if not big, you know, interrupt this disconnect between the massive consumers, the hyper consumers, who are in my building, and I am sadly one of them, to those people who are at the other end of the spectrum and, 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 and work towards the common goal. Because I, I didn't really appreciate how consumerism is, a, is such a critical part of what's driving the health of our planet. Is that too much to ask? I'm sorry. No, no, it's, it, it's not too much to ask if we want a disaster to come. Because the beauty of Sandy, if we can say there was beauty, was that you or anyone that is a heavy consumer had the opportunity to see and put themselves in the place of the poor. Because Sandy was indiscriminate. So you could be a millionaire or you could be someone living 200% below poverty and your child didn't have diapers because there were no, was no store open. You did not have food because there was no restaurant open. It finally opened that part of each one of us who saw it and experienced it that their but go can be me. And it took away the part of any of us that say, well, they had to have created their own poverty. They had to have created their own disaster. They had to have done something not to be able to feed their family. And what we have to do to tap into the love zone that, Joyce, that Josh has presented to the earth is to find that thing in you. What makes you fear for the earth, for your children, mm -hmm. for your grandchildren? What kind of life do you want them to have? You're a parent. I'm a parent. If I'm poverty stricken, I still want my kids to be better than me and to have everything that I want to have. And you can tap into that. So one person at a time, one community at a time, we have to look at what is important on each end of the spectrum and then draw the lines and connect the dots and do the thread that will make us one tapestry and one canvas. And it can be done. It can be done. Add one small thing to that. There are thousands of community centers around. Yes, thank you. So the point is, join Aria Doe and the Action Center. Show up as a part of that movement. Join that place that exists in your town, wherever it is, in your neighborhood, wherever it is, and join up. And spend a few hours a week. I'm not going to say, oh, just check this box or do this one thing. Well, actually, you should check the boxes in the programs um, that are there and hand them off if we want to get involved. You have a ready-made way to do that in your program. But don't look at that while I'm talking. But the, <laughs> but the idea, though, is it's not just a simple thing, actually, that's required. It's not a simple thing. It's a kind of complex thing. And it's a thing that requires time and sacrifice, and we need you to do it. Because when we were facing down the fracking wells, you know, kid, people were missing their kids' Thursday night soccer games to show up at the fracking hearings and so on, and that's what it takes. That's what it takes to actually do this. It's not simply about being an audience or on, online. It's about showing up and being there in numbers. When the protests are called, you show up and you go to the community centers and the places 
you can volunteer. And we want to connect you with those, so please do fill out the cards. We can help you get renewable energy. We can help you connect to your local organizations. All of that is part of our mission and our tour. All right, we have time for one more question. Yes, you. Yes. So in the film, I loved how people from Australia were also kayaking to support Islanders. And it was the first thing that I saw where there was international sports between nations and all one another. Do you find any other relationships like that in this film? Oh, everywhere. Everywhere. In fact, one of the ambitions of this project is to make sure that the people from the film get to meet each other. And um, Mika Maeva actually was coming from Samoa. He had a death in the family, so he actually had to cancel last minute. Um, and it would be great if we could record on an iPhone everybody here screaming, we are not drowning, we are fighting. <laughs> Solidarity to end, that would be really cool. Can we do that, Lee? Do you got an iPhone? We can do that, right? We are not drowning, we are fighting. But what I'm saying is that this isn't... You know what makes me emotionally engaged about this movie? When I see, you know, Jennifer Christopher in Utah and the Pacific Island Warriors and these people in the Amazon all saying the same stuff. People from New York City, they're talking the same language. And so this is that kind of comparative study in values. And uh, it's so resonant to me, right? And so we see this kind of international solidarity all the time. That Pacific, those are 12 different nations. <laughs> in the Pacific Climate Warriors, right? They're one federation. But we're seeing that. And don't, wouldn't you say that you guys in the Rockaways feel a special kinship with the people in the Pacific? I, I know yeah. that in New York. Yeah. Yeah. Love. Right? Yes? yes? Okay. Do you think we, we might manage that for Mika, who's grieving over his father-in-law, um, to, to, to stand up and shout, we're not drowning, we're fighting, and send that out to him? Maybe come on this side, so, or we all go, I don't know what to do. This side, everybody stand up. Just do this for Mika. It, 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 it'll, and it'll also make, you know, a, a lot of, a ripple across the universe that will help. Shall I? Should we do it twice? First with me and then without me? Yeah. Yes. All right. I'll, I'll do We'll say we are, and they'll say fighting. How about that? Okay. We are not traveling. We are fighting. We are not traveling. We are fighting. Thank you very much.